now that you know what a law is and you've mastered that, let's move on to discussing some of the difference between civil law and criminal law. As we learned in the last video, with a civil suit, individual parties are the ones bringing that action. Whereas in a criminal suit, you have the government that's bringing the action. So we're gonna start there and then we're gonna learn four more significant differences between the two. So the first thing again is the parties. The first big difference is the parties. Not only is a lawsuit initiated by different people, they have different names. And if you are a fan of crime shows, um, CSI, any of those, if you pay close attention, this is where they always get it wrong. If you have a private party bringing the lawsuit, that private party that initiates is called the plaintiff. It is a plaintiff. They are the private party that is initiating the lawsuit. On the criminal side, if you have the government that's initiating the lawsuit, you're going to have a prosecutor. It is the prosecutor. And this is where the crime shows go wrong is they tend to call every single attorney a prosecutor or every attorney or every, every attorney that brings the lawsuit. Um, the prosecutor and that is not the case the prosecutor is the government agent that is initiating the criminal action when you have a lawbreaker someone that has committed a crime or allegedly committed a crime the prosecutor is going to be the one to decide do they have enough evidence can they meet all the elements of the crime are they going to prosecute it there's a lot of reasons why they wouldn't there's a lot of reasons why they would that is handled by the prosecutor. On both sides, the person who is being sued is called the defendant. On both sides, you have a defendant. So on the civil side, you have the prosecutor, um, you have the plaintiff who is the private party. I can be a plaintiff, you can be a plaintiff, our neighbors can be plaintiffs, your mom can be a plaintiff, right? Any private party can be a plaintiff the ones bringing the lawsuit. The party that the plaintiff sues is going to be the defendant. So it's plaintiff versus defendant in a civil lawsuit. If you've ever watched Judge Judy, <laughs> everyone who's bringing the lawsuit is the plaintiff. You will never have a prosecutor. It is only civil. It is There's no government actions. It's private lawsuits between private individuals. On the criminal side, again, you have the prosecutor versus the defendant. The person who is allegedly committed crime is the defendant. Plaintiff and defendant against prosecutor and defendant. The next main thing is going to be who pays? Who pays? Going to court is not a cheap <laughs> undertaking. It costs a lot of money to see a lawsuit from start to finish. If you have a private party, the private party, the plaintiff, is going to be the one that is going to pay to initiate the lawsuit. Generally, in most areas of law, and depending on the seat, but generally each party is going to pay for their own legal fees, especially in the beginning, but it's paid by the private individuals, the private individuals. It is the complete opposite on the criminal side. On the criminal side, the government foots the bill. The government brings the action, so the government pays the bill. They not only pay the prosecutor, they're paying the judges, the law clerk, the court reporter, the jury. They pay. Along with the parties, who pays? This is a big difference as well, and this goes along with the parties. The party who brings the lawsuit is the party that pays to bring the lawsuit. So if you have a private party, if I'm the plaintiff, I'm going to pay to initiate the lawsuit. Generally, in most states, though, depending on the area of law, typically each party handles their own legal fees, their own court fees, their own attorney fees. Sometimes, and again, in some areas of law, it is possible for a plaintiff to recover some of their fees, but that's really case specific. 
if the government initiates the lawsuit, the government pays. They pay everything. They pay the prosecutor, they pay the judge, they pay the jury, they pay the court reporter, they pay the law clerk, they pay everything. So if it's the plaintiff, an individual party bring the lawsuit, the plaintiff pays. The defendant pays to represent themselves and to defend the lawsuit. The defendant defends the lawsuit, they have to pay for that. If it's a criminal trial, they are, the defendant is given constitutional rights where if they cannot afford an attorney, an attorney is provided for them, the government then pays that as well. The government on the side of the prosecutor pays and possibly on the side of the defense pays as well. So going to court and seeing an action from start to finish is very costly depending on what the dispute is and what you're arguing over, how much value that has, how long it takes. Sometimes these actions take years to get through and it's very costly. So the plaintiff pays, the prosecution pays, right? It's a matter of private individual or government. The next of the five big differences is going to be in the term of the outcome. On the civil side, we have liable. The defendant is either found liable or not liable. Okay, notice this is a huge difference from the criminal side, which the defendant is found guilty or not guilty. This is another thing that TV shows get wrong. They call everyone not guilty or guilty, and in most drama shows, everyone is guilty. That is not the case for a civil lawsuit, right? If you go and you file for divorce, the judge does not find you guilty or not guilty. <laughs> there may be instances where you might be liable for things such as um, spousal support, alimony, um, different things like that, but you're not guilty or <laughs> at least in the eye of the law, right? A civil lawsuit, the outcome, if it's decided by a jury, so family law is a little bit different, but say if you have a personal injury, if I have been personally injured, the, the court will either find that the defendant is liable for my injuries or is not liable for my injuries. The outcome on the criminal side, it's either the defendant is guilty of say murder, manslaughter, mayhem, burglary, <laughs> assault, battery, any of those things, right? They're guilty or they're not guilty. So the outcome is our second big difference. Let's talk about the terms of the parties as well, the harmed parties. On the civil side, is they're just simply called the injured party. The injured party, they've been wronged in some way. They're the injured party. On the criminal side, the person who's been harmed is called the victim, the victim. So on the civil side, we don't have victims, right? We only have victims on the criminal side. Another thing that is constantly wrong in the media. Okay, so civil side, we have injured party. Criminal side, we have the victim. Okay, so try to remember to kind of keep these straight and you'll really sound like you know what you're talking about. All right, number four is going to be standard of proof. Standard of proof, abbreviated SOP. On the civil side, we have what's called preponderance of the evidence. It's really just a more likely than not, possibly around like a 51%, a preponderance of the evidence. On the criminal side, we have beyond a reasonable doubt. Beyond a reasonable doubt for the criminal side. And what's the reason for the difference? Well, on the civil side, the defendant, if they're found liable, remember liable and liability is our term for a civil suit. What is at stake? It's typically money, right? Possibly some sort of liberty, but typically it's money. It's, it's economic damages that the plaintiff is typically seeking. However, on the criminal side, the government is not so nice. They will occasionally take your money as well but what they're interested in is taking away your freedom. Because your personal autonomy, your freedom is such a significant thing to lose, 
the evidence is really high. Beyond a reasonable doubt is no reasonable jury member, no reasonable judge, no reasonable person on the face of the planet could find the defendant was not guilty. So we have preponderance of the evidence and beyond a reasonable doubt, 51% and 100%. Big difference there, and that is difference number four. All right, the last and final one of our big differences is going to be the consequence. As I just touched on briefly, the consequence for a civil lawsuit, if the defendant is found liable, is going to be civil damages. Civil damages, right? Typically money. Sometimes it's an injunction, right? You want the court to force someone to do or to stop doing something. Typically it's money. On the criminal side, you have criminal penalties, right? Sometimes it's fines. Um, it's mostly you're looking at jail time, prison time, possibly if you live in a state that has capital punishment, you might even have a defendant that is looking at the loss of life. So the consequence is really different. These are our five things that will, if we can remember them, will help us to kind of remember and to kind of determine whether a law is civil or whether a law is criminal. So we have the parties, plaintiff versus prosecutor as the person bringing the case. Who pays? On the civil side, it's the plaintiff who files to initiate the lawsuit. On the criminal side, the government pays. The government pays. The outcome on a civil side, the defendant is liable or the defendant is guilty or not liable and not guilty, but our terms are liable and guilty. The harmed party on the civil side is called the injured party. The harmed party on the criminal side is called the victim. So remember, we do not use the term victim on the civil side. Standard of proof, preponderance of the evidence, beyond a reasonable doubt. Preponderance of the evidence, beyond a reasonable doubt, right? No reasonable person could disagree, beyond a reasonable doubt. Consequences, civil damages, versus criminal penalties, right? Possibly the loss of life, life in prison, things like that, really big penalty. Criminal penalties versus civil damages. Okay, and that is it for the main differences between civil law and criminal law.